Okay, Dean, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, getting, you, getting you torn down so we can get the restoration process rolling. Go ahead and take your bracelet off. thing I really want to take a very close look at are your ceiling surfaces to see what kind of shape they're in. Overall in your case they're pretty good. You got some minor corrosion here. The good thing is, is that it doesn't traverse inward. Um, we'll check under this incorrect gasket. Case back surface is nice so that's good that's always good <clears throat> all right well we're still running that's a good sign I'm gonna go ahead and re-remove your winding weight I like to take some components off and you can see here you see this pitted surface this is for moisture. This is where the moisture has been on the surface and pr for a prolonged amount of time and, dr and extracted some alloys, some material from the, uh, from the winding weight. And you can see that it, it was here as well. So definitely has been quite wet in the past. It always gives me a little concerned, a little concerned when I see that simply because water is just horrendous. It's one of those things that, you know, because the oxidized form of, of steel or iron or any other, you know, oxidation, because it's a crystalline form of the, uh, another type of crystalline form of the material, what you can get is that uh, for some, it's actually has a larger, um, crystal structure and so that can move things around in fact it can move jewels it can move all sorts of things so that doesn't look too bad um, because if it gets into pivots those are made of made of steel and uh, or some stainless steel kind of material not quite sure what alloy they use but if it does corrode and get rusted it can be bad so, it's never good to see moisture. It's nice as your spring is still okay. I'm gonna put this in the rust remediator just to make sure it's clean so the rust stays away. So that will go in a bath, a separate bath. No seals on your pushers. Unsealed pusher there. Ah, I've got an old seal here and this one's like a stiff piece of plastic and so let's go ahead and take your die shock out
cases are so massive <laughs> it makes this makes this movement even seem small they're not small movements okay that's about as far as I want to go in the case it's nice to see everything's at least there which is good so there's your stem and I think I have sourced a crown that's appropriate for this one I have to check to be sure but I think that's the that's the right crown for this so that should that should be what your crown looks like I'm pretty sure I'll have to compare that to mine but uh, that's that's certainly an aftermarket crown I believe I have to look I have to look this is for the UFO style and I'm pretty sure it's the same but we'll look okay off we go go ahead and get your crown back in crown and stem I should say So now let's check and see. Let's see if there's interesting information underneath your dial here. What is it going to say? Six three, I believe. Six four. All right. So. You know, even though, even though you've got a little bit of, you know, polish here and some pieces and parts that are a little bit worn and a little bit aged, you have an authentic matching case back and dial. So that means, you know, this is, this watch is as it, as it was, regardless of all the other, you know, external or internal, um, issues it, it's still a very original dial and the dial is lovely I mean it's a really nice dial once we get that loom taken care of it's going to be a good one I mean that's that's really a nice watch so you should be very happy with this purchase you shouldn't think of it as a as a Franken watch it's not that it is a original bullhead so it's just seen some seen some practices that I don't particularly, you know, do some polishing and things, but otherwise, it's an original watch, and that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead <clears throat> and move into the teardown of the movement. And move some things out of the way so I can store all your things together here. Excuse me. Okay, so let's get the pallet fork out. This will be an important component to think about. A lot of times if they haven't been lubricated well over the years and they've been worn steadily, um, they will, uh, you can actually form a groove in the, in the jewels. And that is a power, a power diminution that I'm not always that 
willing to deal with. Okay, so let's get the power out of your mainspring here. There we go. Okay, now let's take a look and see what we got here. That one's clean. Mm, that one too. Okay, so unless your uh, your jewels are contorted or messed up, um, that should be in good shape, hopefully. Never really know until you're back together. Oh man, another really loose screw on this bridge. This bridge was, about, whoa, that one's not even touching. This bridge was basically ready to come off. Goodness me. That's insane. Mm -hmm. You can see this bushing's been pushed out just a touch from being reset a lot. Okay. May need to clean that a little bit beforehand. Right. Now. Intermediate wheel. Minute recording wheel. Looks okay. Mm-hmm. All right, let's remove some springs. Lever spring. Spring. Go ahead and take the hammer off. Okay, let's get your levers removed. Always want to be very careful with these because they are susceptible to snapping if they've been corroded or tightened too much. I've had that happen and it's never fun. Okay. Show lever number one. nice these are not corroded which is good I mean it's definitely seen its share of moisture but these parts which are pretty susceptible are are actually still in pretty good shape <coughs> excuse me okay there are your jewels escape wheel and third wheel let's go ahead and take your column wheel And it's bushing. Come out bushing. There we go. Okay. Now we can take your ratchet wheel off. And your click. Wheel. You click. Ooh, it's got some material. Whoops, that's escaped. There's your click screw. Okay, so now we can take the train bridge off. Woo, again, loose. Not really holding much down. Again, quite loose. Somebody was cautious. <laughs> Let's say. In this process. There we go. Alright, we're going to take a very close look at your... Whoa! 
Holy moly. Goodness, what is in here? That doesn't look like S2, which is the Seiko style. That's uh, a different look than I've seen before from, from this. All right, so we're gonna check everything. I'll pull out your monograph wheel. We'll take a good look here. It looks pretty good. We're gonna test that a few different ways. Let's go ahead and remove, oh, we got some crud here on your third wheel. Crud everywhere. Crud there, crud there. All right, your escape wheel. Whoa, big hair. I'm gonna take a close look at these pivots. Mm-hmm, it's not bad. I can always say I've seen worse, always say. Let's go take your, I wanna take your barrel out. Okay, that's good. Definitely dirty. Your center wheel's nice and tight, maybe a little too tight. Sometimes corrosion finds its way in here because it's right under the center stack of the hands. And this is the one place where water can certainly accumulate. And in fact, it has done some damage. There is rust on your center wheel. Ooh, boy. Now, that is pretty nasty. It's in the gear, which is interesting. It's not in the, on the pivot. Just curious how really nasty that is. How really nasty that is. Well, we may be replacing this part. It really depends on how clean it gets in the cleaning process. The thing about rust is that it transforms the metal. And so if you have a gear, which should be a smooth sliding surface, that has pits in it, even if you get the rust off, that is no longer a smooth sliding surface. So, we shall see. Well, that side's okay. The pivot looks okay. We'll have to put this under really high magnification in order to really see. Mm. It's not terrible. Okay, we'll see. I'm gonna have to look at that much more closely as we go forward. All right, so some assignments here for me to clean things a little bit more intensely. All right, so now we can move to the calendar and the components that make up the um, Basically, your one there's there's like eight different pieces that make up the one one components one set of components that operate the hour recording wheel uh, on your chronograph, and they're under a secondary plate. So Seiko was able to sort of get a whole bunch of things installed, so you could add one more register for your chronograph. But it's it's a it's a crazy group of things. So all these extended levers and parts and pieces. Roman English day wheel, day disc I should say. A couple scratches here on this. <clears throat> mm. 
<clears throat> that was loose. Somebody's certainly been in here in the past, that's for sure. Oop, come back. There you are. Okay. Let's take your plates off. One. Two. And now for your date ring. There we go. Okay, so now some calendar components are here. Ooh, that's okay. Let's go ahead and remove this. It's tighter than every bridge screw I've touched. <laughs> <laughs> Just to hold the correcting finger on. Okay, there's the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right, so now this plate needs to come off. Luckily, you still have all your original. Whoa, super loose screws. <laughs> Why? Why are these so loose? It's amazing. Some things are just completely wrenched down tight. And then all the screws for your plates and bridges seem to be completely off. It's, it's really weird. Really weird. All right. There we go. There's your plate. All right, now the rest of this is Keyless Works, which operates time, date setting, and winding. And then all of these bits here are for this one wheel, which controls the hour recording. All right, so that's aligned nicely. That's good. Had one the other day, it was pretty far off, and I, I think I understood why. Um, not really an interesting story, but essentially to ensure that uh, the reset happens properly. All right, so there we go. Mm -hmm. Lever. Coco Pelli. Anybody from the 90s would know what that is. Well, let's just take the spring off. Actually, let's take this off one at a time. Let's be proper here. Come on. Alright, come on. There we go. There we have it. All right. There's your lever. And now your spring. Easy peasy. Done. Okay, rest of the calendar. That's this guy. Those calendar parts. There's growling. It's okay. We're babysitting a dog and my dog tried to lay next to him and he didn't like that. Okay. There is the perhaps offending center wheel. And if it's corroded on this side, I'm concerned. Mm. Yeah, okay. So I believe 
that this one may be a goner. And the issue is that this is a 6138 specific part. Which is kind of a bummer. So we'll see what happens here. Alright, we'll we'll try and resurrect it, but uncertain. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. It's good. Take your die shock out. Okay, so now we can remove your keyless works. Which again, are nominally tight, whereas everything else was kind of footloose and fancy free. And there we go. All right, so that's where we are. We're done with the disassembly. We have some very close looking to do at some of these parts. Um, but general, in general, I'd say we're doing all right. And we'll be back with some, yeah, with some clean components. All right, we'll be back. Hey Dean, okay, we are ready to start getting things back together. We have your new center wheel here installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place. Yours was really badly corroded, in fact. Um, I'll take some, hopefully let you see it up close here and so you can see what I'm talking about. But in between most of the gears um, of the teeth of the, of the wheel, um, it was it was just full of rust so that's not what we want we want smooth operation without potential issue okay so my method is to install that first and then i flip the movement and i get the keyless works and the recording our recording components installed and then we go back to the train side so now we can flip it okay okay so let's start with some lubrication on some parts and pieces here. Sorry for the snoring. So just what we do around here, we snore. Lots of snoring. Okay. So keyless works is first, which means we need your stem. And so this is your stem, but you've got a new crown. 
got that installed. There we go. Okay, now look at your setting components. No yolk. <laughs> it is a yolk. All right, now for your B2 bomber. Now, I like to put this in place and then give it a rotate so that I can install other pieces without these pieces popping up. It's just kind of my little method. I do this and then I install this. Place. And give it a little tighten. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, we put your support component. Little slider goes in like so. That's good. Oops, come on. Stay there. Good. Okay, so now, now we moved on to some other parts. Part of your winding, intermediary, intermediate wheels. Let's put your can pinion on first. What do you say to that? Right, let me check that real. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now, now for the fun. Now we get to put in all the pieces that make up this our recording. Set of parts. So here's your spring. One of two. It's part of this. Okay, that's good. And now for this. Which is a component that transfers the reset or the setting from the train side to this side, which is kind of cool. Okay, now we can. Place your our recording wheel in place. Should be good. All right. Here's your hammer. Your reset hammer. There's so much snoring. So sorry. Stay put. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay. The last part is your spring. Come on, spring. There we go. Oh, a couple more parts. We've got uh, put your hour wheel. My goodness, the snoring. My sincere regrets. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, we gotta put your die shock in. Lots to do on this side. Lots of little fiddly bits. whether you've noticed or not, but the plate here is much, much shinier than it was. <clears throat> it's good to see that it did clean up. I mean, the haziness is, you know, a combination of time, age, moisture, lubrication that's been sort of cooked onto the, onto the movement, 
and it's nice to get them clean. Look how nice and shiny this is. Okay, so let's be gentle. Place this on. And there we go. There we go. We got three unique screws. The ones that hold this plate down, that's their job. Only, only three screws that do this, and they are very specific to this task. Not like the other bridge screws. Check everybody's behaving. Yep. That's good. Okay, there we go. Everybody is in and intact. We are ready to flip. Do the flip. We are ready for flipping. Uh, yes, okay. So now, <clears throat> now we get to install the train. So here we go. Let's do that. Oops, sorry about that. There's your escape wheel. Here is your third wheel. I want to take a very close look at this one again. All right, give me a moment. We're going to look at your third wheel under the microscope just to see. Okay, disaster averted. It was a piece of crud that had lodged itself into the gear of the one of the, between the teeth and the cleaning process did not remove it. Um, so, I did manually by hand. All right, let's go ahead and get your barrel in. Uh, your mainspring looked good. I was, I was able to just replace it, which is nice. It's always nice. Now, I am missing a part, and I'm not sure if it's actually missing or if I'm just missing it. It is missing. Holy mackerel. Yeah. You weren't able to hand wind. There's a gear. It goes right here. That was not in your watch. I missed it during disassembly because, you know, it's not in, it's not in all of them. It's only in this one. It's not there. Holy mackerel, you need one. Okay, we're going to find you one. We'll be right back. Okay, so I was able to locate a part. And there it is. That's the one. All right, now for your... Very nice chronograph wheel. Okay, next up is your bridge. So we're going to put this in place. Everybody 
these kind of interleave all these teeth and then we gotta get your pivots settled in Okay, very nice. Let's get everything settled. Everybody's wheeling. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and lubricate while we're here. Do some lubrication for your chronograph components. Okay. Need a bit of grease. process here and lots of lots of layers in these chronographs just like with any watch with complications things will be stacked and interleaved and it's just the way they roll let's go ahead and get your ratchet wheel installed we should probably put your click on too <laughs> Doesn't have much purpose without a click. That's important. Wheel. 
let's go ahead and get your bushing. And then your column wheel, which also needs to be lubricated. Lever. And there we go, two levers. in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's a high pressure spot there, so we're going to Put some heavy duty lubrication. Okay, next up is your hammer. A little bit of magnetization here. We gotta demag everything before we go too far. Reset lever spring. So goes back. There we go. Okay, let's get your minute recording wheel installed. It gets a drop of oil here on the shaft. There is a jewel. <clears throat> and your dry fitted intermediary wheel. There we go. And now for your chronograph bridge. She needs some pretty heavy duty lubrication here at the top. Right here.
and springs up a bit high. There we go. Sitting a bit proud. There we go. Well, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> Every time. Drop it right in the hole. Got to grip these differently. <laughs> uh. Okay. Well, that is good. There we go. Okay, we got to put some lubrication on your jewels that rest on the calendar side. So we'll flip your movement over here before we engage the train. We will lubricate. All right, I'm going to pull this over here so I can see really well. Just been joined by dogs. All right. Mm hmm. Lively. That's good. Let's put some power in here and see how we did. Hmm. That looks pretty good. Very good. Okay. We need some lubrication up here. And here. Okay. Next up is your pallet fork. And there that goes. We're going to check this jewel to make sure it's nice and dry and clean. Which looks right. And there we go. Just put some power in so we can engage your... There it goes. Okay, let's go ahead and power up your mainspring here. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Next. the balance. Let's take one last look. That looks pretty good. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get it to run.
And there we go. Running. Doing the right thing. All right. Still have to install your die shock jewel. It's like a little cassette here that slips into the top, like so. Stabilizes your running of your balance. Oh, come on now. Come with me. Okay, let's give it a quick demag and then we'll look at it on the time grapher. We'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and get some adjusting done. I'm pretty encouraged by this. I mean, that signal's <laughs> a little bit better than what we started with, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna see some moving around here, but then it'll settle back down again. So let's go ahead and get the beat error taken out. So take a 50-50 chance here and see which direction this needs to go in. Worse or better? Oh, well that's pretty good. That's better. Okay. So, everything's... Okay, so that wasn't so bad. I uh, just had to make an adjustment and everything was fine. Um, this is great. This is really nice. I really am happy with where we're headed. Uh, I'm going to continue to make some adjustments here just to ensure we're perfect, but things are going to change as lubrication finds its way around. But this is a good starting point. I'm happy with where we are. Let's get this, at least get the beat error taken care of as much as possible. Okay. Now, let things recover a little bit and see where we go. It's always good to let things rest for a moment before you start adjusting another thing. Good though, this is good. Okay. All right. All right, that's good. Come on, jump up there, yeah. Jump up. 220 is nice, 230 is nicer. Let's get there. Come on, movement, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Can you do it? Oh, come on. Come on, let's go. All right, let's take a little bit off. Just the right down, just a touch. Oh. Come on. You can do better than that.
movements you have to apply to these to get this. It's just so small. Oh, that's not what I want. That's too much too. Can we get it? Nice. Here we go. Where are we? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, come on. Am I making it worse or better? Too much. Too much. Oops. Ugh. So sorry. Let's make sure this is right. I'm trying to position the movement so I can make the adjustments. And the cable is a little tight here. Just gonna continue to fiddle with this. I should just let this break in and stop farting around. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Let's just let it break in. I should stop playing with it. Just put a cover on it and let it rest. We'll come back and make fine adjustments towards the end here. But overall, that's that's really nice. Clean signal. I mean, you remember what we had in the in the overview? It was just a total snowy mess. But this looks pretty good. I'd say we we made improvement. All right. Well, we're gonna let this work a little bit, and um, we'll come back and give it a look. All right. We'll be back. Okay, Dean. Well, we have uh, been watching this break in for a little while, so I think we're doing really well here. To see this watch in the high 230s, mid 230s, that's that's really a fantastic place to be. Signal's excellent. So we're just going to keep going and start putting things back together. Okay, it's time for the last few pieces here. We're going to go ahead and get your the rest of your calendar set up. And what's nice about having the keyless works and everything put together prior to this point is that it's only a few minor minor parts and pieces to go back together before we go back to dial and hands which I'm excited to show you so I think you're gonna be happy with the outcome so let's do this the last few parts Hmm. A little concerned here. I'm gonna try another another item. It's, ooh, yeah. 
I don't think that should be so tight. I have another one. Give me one. Okay. So that's much better. That one is in very good shape and ready to ready to function properly without any issue. So we're gonna go with that. You'll get yours back. I'll go over all the replacement parts here at the end. Okay. We want to put a little lubrication on the end of that jumper just to be sure. There we go. plate goes on oh my gosh I have the noisiest dogs on the planet One and now plate number two. Okay. Good. Get your very nice. Day wheel in place. Day disc. I always want to call it a wheel. I guess it's a wheel, so it's it's more of a disc, but who's counting? Okay. Your C clip. Alright. There it is. Okay. That's the movement built out. That's all of it right there. Let's make sure everybody's happy. Turn and turn. Excellent. Okay, Dean, we are right here at the end. Let's go ahead and get the last few pieces installed. And then we can have a good look at what we've done. Just a little bit more lubrication here. All right, let's get your winding framework installed.
Okay, there's your winding weight. There's your case back with its new seal. Ready to go in. Nice and clean. All right, let's get that screwed down. All right, here we are. Well, there it is. There is your really nice redone, reloomed, and cleaned up service running really, really strong. Let's take that off. Now, hopefully, we can see. There it is. There's your bullhead. It's a really, really sharp looking watch. So everything I think came out really great. You got a new crown. I reloomed your dial and your hands and they just, let's see if we can actually see that. It came out really well. Turn off the light here, charge up your loom a little bit. There it is. Not too bad. Looks pretty good. Okay. Lights are on. Sorry about that. It's amazing how it just draws that dial out. Um, you know, without the without the loom there, it just looks dark around the edge because it has that sort of sunburst effect from the light brown to the dark. And without the accents there, it just sort of blends in and, and looks really dull. Um, but your chronograph works great. Everything ticks over as it should. We'll let that tick away here. Let me get it so you can actually see your dial. Try and tip this up just a bit here. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the things that we have done. So new seals, new crown, new crystal. You got a new date finger, that's your case back seal that was incorrect. Um, you got a new uh, center wheel, you know, just a, just a few parts that, that really just were necessary. This had some really bad corrosion. If you look under a microscope, you can see that this was an incorrect crown. You had a plexiglass crystal, which is incorrect for this watch. You now have a nice hard lex crystal, which is proper. Uh, the right shape, the right profile, everything is, is good. Um, yeah, so everything just works great. I want to give you a little bit of a tip on uh, resetting. Um, I always reset my chronograph back to the zero position between somewhere between 11 and 1. Um, it's only there to help preserve the chronograph. Um, it, it's, a, it's a thing with these watches, especially with the white white painted hand watches. Um, if you reset the chronograph somewhere where the chronograph itself is between, oops, this is the other side. Uh, if the minute hand is between the chronograph and vertical, then if it's a hard reset from way down here and it goes past this hand, there can be flexure in this uh, chronograph hand and it can actually hit your minute hand and cause a nick. And a lot of times you'll see these um, that they've actually cracked some of the paint on these on these hands, and and for that reason alone, I'd say you know try and get it as close to midnight as possible on the reset. Well, Dean, this is a great looking watch. It runs spectacularly well. I'll get your um, your bracelet back on for you. We'll get that sent home uh, with all your parts, and uh, we're done. This is one of those watches that I was a little nervous about simply because it had seen some water and, and we did know that we were going to have to replace a few things. Um, but otherwise, it's a great, great little watch. It runs fantastically well. I'm just really happy with the way it came out. Okay, thanks so much.